Okay, so today, uh, as you can see, I have the J-Link out, so we're going to be programming uh, one of these microcontrollers. So this is another one that I uh, got in that's doing the same thing, where as it gets cold, the it quits working, and gets hot, it works again. Um, so we got the same thing going on with it, a failing microcontroller. Uh, it works enough that I should be able to grab the data off of it. We're switch to the other screen here in just a second and watch that uh, but what's different about this one is I finally have received my first one of these from China uh, this one was sourced by UT source it does kind of look a little funky at least in the print here so this may be just some random chip that they reprinted uh, but we'll find out today hope hopefully it works uh, it looks pretty close to the real deal um, it doesn't even look like it's been used there's no sign of previous soldering on it but yeah the printing does look a little bit funky so uh, maybe we got a legitimate one maybe we don't um, but we'll find out here in just a minute so um, first I need to dump the data off of this microcontroller because uh, I don't have a gas uh, six cluster yet, but once I take it off of here, I'll have the data off of it. Uh, it'll end up on my GitHub where I upload all of the different bins that I've uh, dumped off of these. But um, yeah, let's uh, switch to the other screen here and uh, take this data off of here. But uh, same setup as every other time where we uh, just kind of hook the J link into the JTAG connections there. Uh, Hopefully y'all can read that. The second row here is the J-Link pins to the uh, test point pins on the board. So I'll pull it up a little bit closer. Uh, I got pretty crappy handwriting, but um, hopefully y'all could read that. And then these two over here are the voltage reference and the ground for the JTAG. So let's switch over to the other screen now and uh, take this data off of here. Okay, so we're all hooked up here. So let's go ahead and pull up the J-Link software. There it is. All right. J-Flash to re do the readback. So again, we're just gonna use the same uh, same processors we used last time because the J-Link doesn't actually support this particular processor, but this one has all of the stuff in the right area. So we'll go ahead and connect to it and then it'll generally show some sort of like error message looking thing on the screen it'll say like io or something like that all right this time it said cr but all right so we're now connected to it and let's go ahead and do a read back so uh and when i said on the screen i was talking about on the screen of the instrument cluster i know y'all can't see that right now um okay so then we're gonna go do a read back read back entire chip and there we go we did a read back so now we have that and we'll just go ahead and save the data so save data file and it's going to be a bin so binary file and then just 2008 gas backup okay and there we go we've now saved it so now we are good to take the chip off. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of this. And I'm going to switch over back to the camera and we'll pull this chip off of the board. Okay, so back to the camera. Let's go ahead and put some flux on here and get this chip off. I like to use chip, chip quick flux. I like it because it's nice and sticky when you're putting down the new chip. It kind of holds it where you want it. I don't really like the way it smells though. Kind of awful smelling stuff. All right, and we got our hot air temp uh, hot air tool set to a temperature of 370 Celsius on here. And we're just gonna slowly kind of work our way around the chip and get it off of here so this one has it it does still have conformal coating but i already scraped it off it has a clear conformal coating on this one instead of that blue conformal coating we normally see let's grab some tweezers and see if we not quite in business yet these chips have a good amount of 
uh, thermal mass to them, so it takes a second to get them off of here. You don't want to rush and accidentally pull a uh, pad off. These these really small pads can be really hard to work on. If you had a uh, reball station, it might work a little better. And we got her off of there. It looks like we didn't pull any pads up, but I'll have to double check under the microscope. Man, that one was really stuck on there. That underfill gets under there and it's a real pain to do. I'm not underfill, sorry. The um, conformal coating gets underneath there and really sticks them to it. Because as you could, I, I don't know if you could see it on the camera, but if you pull, you could tell it was in the center where it was stuck. Because around here, you'd see all the little pads come up and then on that side they wouldn't be and you go to the other side and they'd be coming up so yeah it's just that all that conformal coating stuck on the bottom you can i don't know if you can see it on camera but there's an awful lot of it just sitting there so uh i'm gonna stop recording for a minute and check under the microscope on all of these and clean it up with some solder wick and get ready for uh, putting the new chip on okay so i didn't record um putting the chip on the board because uh, just like last time I tried it's just too laggy with the camera so I clean, cleaned up the pads I did have one halfway lifted pad um, but uh, I was able to straighten that out and work with it so let's go ahead and put the um, flash on there so we're gonna do JTAG same chip set here let's go ahead and slow this down a little bit helps keep from having glitches and let's select our data here all right let's see here it's under documents i believe yep all right gas six gauge backup either one's the same one all right let's give it some power here and let's go ahead and program device accept All right, so we're programming it, verifying, looks like we successfully wrote to it. Now I need to disconnect from it and let it boot up. So let's go ahead and switch over here to the board view. Okay, and as you can see here, it worked. So using these uh, chips uh, that they sell over in China. They are legitimate chips and they do work. So this was a successful repair. Um, I purchased this from UT Source. I used eBay so that way I had eBay's buyer's protection, but if you buy them directly from them, they're a little bit cheaper. So yeah, this was a successful repair. I'll uh, go ahead and get this back together. Okay, so got a little different setup going on here, but I just wanted to show you this guy all up and running here. So here we got the oscilloscope. Uh, the camera's not really doing a good job of capturing it, but uh, we got the oscilloscope going so we can see that the GM one wire CAN system is trying to communicate. I don't have anything to communicate with it to, but I just wanted to make sure it was working. So we can see it powers back up and all the buttons work. So. Yeah, we have a working instrument cluster. All the motors try to sweep. Um, so, yeah, everything's working. Uh, so, the uh, 
chips from China do work, and uh, they they do seem to be legitimate. Um, I would assume they're used chips. They don't list them as new on UT Source, but they looked new. I didn't see any sign of previous solder work on there, so they at least do a good job of cleaning them up, so they they look new. But um, let's go ahead and get this uh, put back together, and. Uh, Maybe somebody in the future will help me with this project. This is a Arduino with a CAN module, so that way I could communicate with these, just like the uh, the box I already have built up there that does the uh, J185 or single wire CAN. So, yeah, hopefully you like this video. Um, maybe you caught the accidental live stream of it, but I, I keep hitting that button. They're right next to each other. Uh, if I have any input to uh, open broadcast, y'all should uh, move the start stream button away from the start record button because I'm always hitting the wrong button. But yeah, hey, I hope you like the video. Uh, subscribe, share the video, and if you uh, have one of these that you want repaired, send it in and I'll fix it.